Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. I no longer see fearful things in the night. All that has changed. Night and the shadows are friendly. Now it is the daylight that frightens me. Another Sunday night, and again CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the unusual story of Legacy of Death. It was ten years ago that Henry Mitchell, formerly a biologist, married Martha Holliston, the widow of a wealthy cotton grower. Martha continued to direct the business of the plantation with the aid of Henry as overseer. She had one child, a daughter, by her deceased husband, a girl named Doreen. Now the mother lies on her deathbed. She's been ill for almost a year and grown steadily weaker. It won't be long now, Henry. And there's something I must tell you. Something you must promise to do for me. Yes, Martha, I'll do anything. It's about my daughter. Doreen is 21 now. She's a woman, and she'll be thinking of marriage soon. I know, Martha. I've watched her every move, raised her carefully. I've been stern in my opinions regarding her. And perhaps at times I've, I've seemed too strict. Yes, Martha, but a mother knows best. Doreen has always been an odd child. You've mentioned that yourself many times. And as she grew older, she became more strange each day. A peculiar, exotic mind. She must still be guarded and handled carefully until she reaches 30. What are you trying to say, Martha? Doreen is the last of her father's line. And from that line, she's inherited something horrible. What? You mean insanity? No, not insanity. Not insanity? Well... But a horrible tendency. It skipped her father. If it appears at all, it always occurs in the early 20s. If it doesn't appear by the time they reach 30... Then they're safe. But what is it, Martha? What has she inherited? The tendency to murder. Murder? Good Lord. She must be handled delicately. Gently, like a flower. Treated as a minor until she's 30. And if she suffers no emotional upset by then, she's safe. Love. Deep love. Paves the way for possible emotional upsets. Jealousy. Hatred and fear. But, but it may skip her. You must promise me that you'll care for her as you would your own daughter. Yes, dear, I promise. <sighs> According to her father's request, I've left the estate to Doreen with you as trustee and manager at a yearly salary. Yes, yes, Martha, that, that's very good of you. Until she's 30, she must have your consent in every matter, particularly marriage. Yes. <sighs> If she defies you regarding marriage, then you must tell her the truth, but only then. I understand, Martha. Oh, please, please don't say any more. Now that I've told you, I, I can rest so much easier. I, I'll send Doreen in now, dear. I'll be just outside. Henry, you're a darling. Doreen stepped into the room, knelt at her mother's bedside, and a few minutes later, Martha was gone. Now six months have passed, and Henry has hired another overseer, young Irving Wallace, a graduate of Agricultural University. Irving has fallen madly in love with the strange, unpredictable Doreen. Do you realize, Doreen, I, I almost turned down the offer to take this job? And something kept saying to me, take it, take it. And I did, darling. I don't know why at the time, but now I know. The night. I love the night. And the river and the moon. What? Daytime and the sun unnerves me. 
Never at ease. Never able to think clearly. Till the sun goes down and I see the moon on the river. It is pretty. When I was a little girl, I was always frightened of the dark. I fancied all sorts of horrors waiting for me in every shadow. Yes. Now, in the last year or two, I've somehow lost my fear of the darkness. I no longer see things in the night. Night and the shadows are friendly. And it's the daylight that frightens me. Doreen, what are you trying to say? What? What sort of talk is this? What's happened to you, Doreen? You've changed. You've grown distant and detached. We come down here to the river now, and you just stare at the moon and talk in riddles. I don't understand it. No? I don't either. Well, I don't like it, darling. It, Well, it's not natural. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean I don't approve of such ideas coming from the woman I uh, love. You don't? I want my wife to be normal. I don't want her to be afraid of the daylight and come to her senses only at night. What right have you to say what I shall like? And what do you mean by your wife? What? Doreen, what? I thought... Did I ever say I'd marry you? No, but what else would I think? Did I ever say I loved you? Well, you surely gave no indication that you didn't. What's wrong with you, Doreen? Doreen! What? Oh, please, darling, tell me what's wrong. What have I done? Nothing. Done nothing. Do you mean you... You don't want to marry me? I don't know. I... I'm afraid. Oh, darling, if you only knew how I worship you... I'm just afraid. Afraid of all men. What an awful thought. Please go. Please, leave me alone. I can't understand you, Doreen. Please go, Irving. All right. I'll go if you insist. But please don't stay here long. It, it's almost midnight. What? Nothing, darling. Nothing. I saw the light in the library, Mr. Mitchell, and I wanted to talk to you. Have you noticed anything strange about your stepdaughter lately? Strange. I mean about her behavior, her actions. Not particularly. Well, I, I just left her down on the riverbank, and she's talking a lot of nonsense. Nonsense? And what were you doing down at the riverbank at this time of night? I, I may as well tell you. I'm in love with Doreen. I want to marry her. Marry? Yes. I knew nothing of this. Well, I, I suppose it's only natural. It's just the way it happens, but... Oh, well, really, Mr. Mitchell, I, I love her so much that I... Never mind. You needn't say any more. Good heavens. Is it such a shock? After all, she's a woman. What's wrong, Mr. Mitchell? Are you ill? No. No, I'm just... What did you say about Doreen acting strangely? Well, in, in the last few days, she's changed. She's acting in a weird sort of manner. Weird? Yes. She says that the daylight frightens her, and she, she loves the dark and the moon... Tell me, is Doreen in love with you? Well, I certainly thought she was. She led me to believe so. Until tonight. And had you talked of marriage? Not until this evening. But I thought the idea was mutual. Then all of a sudden, she turned cold. Well, that's why I came to you. Maybe she's ill or something. Yes. Yes, Irving, she is ill. What? Sit down, my boy. You really love her? Oh, more than I can tell. You have only her best interest at heart? I do. Thank heaven you told me this in time. I'm going to ask a sacrifice of you, Irving. You must stay away from Doreen. You must say no more to her about love or marriage. Why not? I love her. Then you'll do as I say. Keep out of her way as much as possible. I know that seems hard, but for her own good, you must. What do you mean? What's wrong? I see, I have to tell you the truth. Since this has happened, I must tell you. Doreen has inherited something... Something that may lie dormant, but which under emotional stress may appear without warning. Are you trying to frighten me? Oh, no. Doreen has inherited a tendency to... To what? To murder. Murder? Oh, I can't believe it. Yes. It's a strain on her father's family. It appears only in the 20s, but if it doesn't appear before 30, the person is safe from the malady. Oh, it just doesn't seem possible. I promised her dear mother I'd do my best to protect her from emotional disturbance of any kind until she reached 30. Now, do you understand? Yes, I... I understand you, but... Well, I... I'm not cold. You say she's acting strangely. That may be an indication. And you must do your part to help by staying away from her. Very well. I will. If it's for her own good. It is, Irving. Believe me. Irving keeps his word. And difficult as it is, he avoids Doreen. 
then a few weeks later, Henry Mitchell's handsome young brother, his only living relative, Clyde Mitchell, a wealthy Hollywood writer whom Henry hasn't seen in years, drops in unexpectedly. Well, Clyde, you've been doing very well in Hollywood, haven't you? Yes, indeed. Hollywood's been good to me. I've made a fortune. And I've handled my money in a better fashion than most of them. Hmm. Every dollar I get is turned over to a manager and he invests it for me. I couldn't write my name to a check for 500 if I wanted to. Good. I'm glad to hear you finally got some sense. Why did you give up your biological research? Oh, I haven't entirely given it up. I still dabble in agricultural biology. You seem to be doing all right, Henry. This is a nice plantation, nice home. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet your wife. She had a daughter, didn't she? Yes, she's here. Doreen. Strange girl, most unusual. No children of your own, Henry? None. You and I, the last of our line. We're the only living ones of the family. It's up to you to carry on the name, Clyde. Yes. Well, I suppose I'll get around to that sooner or later. I'm engaged. I expect to be married this summer. Maybe before. Hollywood girl? She lives in Hollywood, but she came from Boston. One of the Harrington girls. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was here. Oh, come in, Doreen. Come in. This is my brother, Clyde. Clyde? I'm glad you know you, Clyde. Doreen. What a charming name. Clyde is a movie writer. Been quite successful in Hollywood. Oh, now, don't tie me down to pictures, Henry. I've written a few novels, too. Yes, I know. You wrote Moon in the River. Guilty? I was terribly impressed by it. It was... Well, it was out of this world. (laughs) I have a fan. (laughs) Are you staying for a while? Oh, a few days. I like it here. Do you? Mm. I'm glad. I... Well, I'll leave you alone now. I I know you want to talk. Good night. Nice girl. I said she's a nice girl. Oh, yes, yes, she's gorgeous. I've never seen such red hair, such strange eyes. Why, they're almost... They're hypnotic. Red hair and green eyes. What did you say? I didn't say anything, Clyde. you brought me down here tonight, Doreen? The river, Clyde. The moon in the river. Look at it. A stream of silver and gold flowing on and on. Down to the sea. To the melting pot. To eternity. Yes. It's very beautiful. That's your river. Moon and the river. You may be conscious of that, Clyde. It breathes and lives. That's why I've come to love the night and... Hold no fear of the dark. You mean you're at ease in the dark? Night I'm through, and the moon thrills me. The moon and the river. And they mean the same to you. The same? They must. Or you could never have written as you did. You and I are the same, Clyde. We say alike. Look at me, Clyde. Yes? Why don't you say it? I know what you're thinking. Say it. Doreen, I... You love me. No, no, don't turn away. Look in my eyes and say it. I love you. I love you, Doreen. And I love you, darling. Oh, Clyde, dear. If you only knew what it meant to me, you're coming here two weeks ago. You saved me, Clyde. Saved me. But you don't understand, Doreen. It's, it's all wrong. Everything is wrong. Look at me, Clyde. Look. Everything is right. Just as it was intended. Isn't it? But you must listen. Hold me close, Clyde. Yes, me. Doreen, darling, I... Yes, dearest. What are you trying to tell? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, I can't Clyde. think. Nothing else matters. Nothing is real but our love. And the moon and the river. And you won't leave me, Clyde, ever. I won't let you. Doreen, please... This can't go on. It it isn't right. I've got to get away. You won't leave. You can't leave me because you love me. Yes. Yes, help me. Help me. I I must be mad. But I do. I do love you. But I I just can't seem to... Don't say a word, dear. Just us. And the moon. And the river. Clyde. Uh, yes, Henry? Come into the library. 
I've just been talking with Irving. Said you were walking down by the riverbank a while ago. Uh, yes, I was. Uh, that is, What's I... What's wrong with you, Clyde? What's happened? I don't know, Henry. I'm leaving in the morning. Leaving? I must. I, I've got to get back to Hollywood. I'm getting married, you know. Next summer, you said. Or did I? Well, I, I've decided to get married as soon as possible. Clyde, I know where you've been. You've been with Doreen. Irving told me. Yes. I was with Doreen. I don't know what's happened to me since I've been here. But I do know I mustn't stay another day. I'm leaving in the morning. Have you fallen in love with Doreen? I don't know, Henry. I don't know what's wrong. Is she in love with you? Is that it? Yes, she is. I tried to fight it off, but... Well, it's just I lost all sense of logic. Doreen is a strange creature, Clyde. I'm certainly aware of that. It seems to... Uh, I'm powerless to keep away from her. I mustn't stay longer. I... Uh... I'm leaving the first thing in the morning. I'm sorry to see you go, Clyde. I hoped you'd stay longer, but perhaps under the circumstances it's best. I only wish I were free to go with you. You can come along if you want. No, I... I can't leave, Clyde. Because of Doreen. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, Clyde. I can't leave her alone for a single moment. What's wrong with her? There's something odd about her, and you know what it is. Does she know you're leaving? No. No, I tried to tell her. I see. And I'd better tell her? Yes. Good night, Henry. Clyde climbs the stairs and goes to his room. Henry stands in the door of the library, lost in thought. A few moments pass and Doreen comes into the hallway from outside and starts for the stairs. Doreen? Yes? Come in. What is it? I've just learned that you've become infatuated with my brother. Infatuated? And before it becomes more serious, I, I want to warn you that it'll be a mistake for, well, for you to fall in love. What do you mean? Why shouldn't I fall in love? Well, don't you think it'd be better to learn more about a man before you allow your emotions to carry you off your feet? I don't understand you. Why should I wait? It, it'll be better if you do. Please believe me. What's the reason back of all this? Well, I... Doreen, I hate to tell you this... Why don't you say it? What is it? You have... You, you, you're making a fool of yourself. I mean, Clyde is making a fool of you. That isn't what you were going to say. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. I know my brother better than you. He isn't serious about you. Well, he's never been serious about any woman. He never will be. He isn't the type. Believe me, he doesn't love you. I don't believe you. I know he loves me. I know. And I'm going to marry him. Marry him? Yes. You poor girl. I'm terribly sorry for you. Clyde was here a few minutes ago. I asked him about you, and he told me that he wasn't in love with you. You see, my dear... He's engaged to another woman. He's going back in the morning to be married. Married? If, if he had been serious, he'd have told you the truth. I'm sorry this had to happen to you. I have tried my best to keep you from falling and... It... What did you say? Go on, finish. Well, I said that... Oh, please, Doreen, don't become upset. You tried to keep me from falling in love. That's what you were going to say. Doreen, you must... Why didn't you want me to fall in love? Why? No, 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 Doreen, control yourself. Do you know what I'm thinking? Doreen. I despise you. I hate you. Oh, no, you don't understand. You don't want me to marry Clyde. You don't want me to marry anybody. And I know why. You're lying to me. You told him something to drive him away. I've told him nothing, and I'm not lying I'll to you. I'll find out in just a moment. Wait, Doreen, wait. I, uh... I didn't want to tell you, but I see now that I must. You see, my dear, you've... You've inherited a complex, something that lies dormant and may be brought into action under emotional stress. Inherited a complex? Yes. A tendency to murder. Murder? And that's why I've tried to keep you from falling in love, from subjecting yourself to emotional stress. So that's what you told him. Another lie. Oh, no. <laughs> so I've inherited a desire to kill. Does anyone else know that? I... Yes, I had to tell Irving. I see. Good night. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, no, no, no. Come come in, Irving. Come in. I wanted to talk to you about... Hello, Doreen. Hmm? I said... What's the matter with you, Doreen? Nothing. Nothing is the matter. You, you look as though you... Doreen, what is it? Are you ill? Yes. Yes, I am ill. Haven't you heard? Doreen! Good night, both of you. What's wrong with her? I've never seen her like this. 
Do you suppose... I had to tell her, Irving. I had to. Then it's happened. She snapped. I can tell. I don't know what to do now. I just talked to Clyde. I told him he had to leave at once. The sooner the better. And I... I told him why. I told him about Doreen. I begged them to go for her sake. He only laughed at me. Told me to tend to my own business. Oh, Clyde tells her the truth, which he will. She's liable to snap completely. But what can we do? I know what to do. When Clyde tells her, she'll turn violently against him. He's got to leave on the first train in the morning, but tonight she may do something. I'll change rooms with Clyde after she talks to him. What can I do? Nothing, Irving. Just try to forget it. Oh, uh, you can get me some coffee. I've got to stay awake tonight. <laughs> What is it? I want to ask you something, Clyde. What? Are you leaving in the morning? Well, uh, yes, Doreen, I am. Why? I have some business to attend to. Why are you leaving me, Clyde? Why don't you take me with you? Take you? But I can't do that. Why didn't you tell me you were leaving? Well, it, it came up all of a sudden. Oh, did it? What did your brother tell you about me? Well, he, he didn't tell me anything. No? I love you, Clyde. But I... You can't leave without me. I can't take you with me, Doreen. It's impossible. Why is it? Because... Well, because I'm going to be married. Married? Yes. I wanted to tell you, but... Married? I thought you loved me, Clyde. Oh, Doreen, I can't stay here any longer. I can't go on like this. Why didn't you tell me you loved someone else? Why? I don't know. I really don't know. Are you afraid of me? I'm leaving in the morning, Doreen. That, that's definite. Good night, Clyde. Doreen, I... I... Goodbye, darling. <laughs> the next morning. Breakfast is set early since the first train leaves at 8.30. At 7, Doreen, her face pale, deep shadows under her green eyes, comes slowly down the stairs to the sunroom. Good morning, Doreen. Good morning. Sit down, Doreen. Did you rest well? No. I didn't sleep so well either. Guess the storm disturbed me. Was there a storm? Yes, an electrical storm. Didn't you hear it? I don't remember. What time does the train leave? 8.30. Clyde will be down in a few minutes. Uh, Mr. Mitchell. Yes? Mr. Bolton would like to see you. Oh. Tell him to come in. Morning, Mr. Mitchell. Morning, Bolton. This is Mr. Davis, my assistant. This is Dr. Upton. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, gentlemen, this is my daughter, Doreen, and this is my superintendent, Irving Wallace. Yes, I know. How are you, Irving? What? What are you doing here? May we see the body, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, Sheriff. Sheriff? The body? Well, what's happened? Clyde has been murdered. Clyde! Murdered? Well, murdered? Yes, during the night. Clyde! Come along, gentlemen. Upstairs. The sheriff and his deputy make the routine inspection of the room and the body. And after the coroner completes his examination, they return to the breakfast room. I'm afraid I'm to blame for this unfortunate circumstance. My wife begged me to keep her from emotional upset. I did my best, but I'm afraid it wasn't enough. I never dreamed she was falling in love with Clyde. When I learned about it, it was too late. I made a mistake by telling her. It only upset her the more. Say she inherited this tendency to kill from her father? Yes. Her mother made me promise to guard her carefully until she was 30. You see, it only appears in the early 20s, if at all. It lies dormant and may be brought to the fore by emotional stress. Oh, I see. Too bad. Did you leave your room last night, miss? What? Uh, no, that is, I, I don't remember. You were in love with him, and you didn't know about the other woman? I loved him. I didn't know about the other woman until last night. I didn't kill Clyde. You have no recollection of leaving your room? No, I... Will you come to town with us, miss? Why? Oh, we just want to talk to Wait. you. Wait. Wait, I can't stand this any longer. Doreen, why, she didn't kill Clyde. I know. I killed him. You? But... Here we go again, Doc. You're trying to protect her, I think, because you love her. I do love her. Sure you do. Where's the gun? Gun? There's no gun. Clyde wasn't shot. No? No. I killed him with a sickle. A sickle from my tool shed. Now, do you believe me? Has he seen the body, Mr. Mitchell? No. I didn't say how he was killed, but Irving... I you killed can... him. I knew about Doreen, and I wanted to save her because I, I, I was jealous of Clyde. Well, he was killed with a sickle, all right. Yes, my sickle from the tool shed. Now, do you believe me? Do you know what you're saying, Irving? I think he's shooting in the dark. No, and I can prove it. If Doreen had entered that room and stabbed anyone, she would have killed Henry. Not Clyde, but Henry. Why? Because Henry was afraid of what might happen during the night. So he changed rooms with Clyde. 
And I was the only one who knew that. Doreen would have killed Henry. Is that true, Mr. Mitchell? Why, yes, we did change rooms, but... And she didn't know that. Well, I don't know how she could have known it, but she must have discovered the switch. You know, I think Irving knows too many details to be lying. I think he's telling the truth. I am. I killed him. He didn't. Irving didn't kill him. He is trying to protect me. I remember something now. Remember what? If you killed him, Irving, what time was it? It was 4 a.m. Have you established the hour of death, Doctor? I have. Wait, I'll tell you. It was it was at midnight, 12 o'clock. What time was he killed, Doc? About 12 o'clock last night. Couldn't possibly have been 4. How did you know that? At midnight, I went to Clyde's room to talk to him. I was awakened by a horrible dream. It, it frightened me, so I went to his room. Clyde wasn't there. No one was there. So if Henry was occupying that room, and he was not there at midnight, Henry must have been in Clyde's room. What? Henry must have killed Clyde. What? You... Oh, why would I kill my own brother? For the same reason you killed my mother. Oh, nonsense. I've been suspicious of you ever since Mother died. What? I know you've looted my estate. Now, look. That's why you didn't want me to marry. And you were your brother's only heir. He was wealthy and his money could save you. You knew I was suspicious of you. Why, this is ridiculous. So you killed Clyde for his money and tried to blame it on me because you knew I'd be suspected. That's why you told Irving about my hereditary tendency. Why, why, why she's crazy, gentlemen, completely insane. Examine my mother's body. Check the account. She's mad, Mr. Mr. Mitchell, do you believe she inherited this tendency to murder? Why, why certainly her, her mother warned me of all this. Uh, you're a biologist, aren't you, Mitchell? Well, yes, yes, I, I was. You still are, Dr. Henry Mitchell. Well, I still dabble in biology, uh, only as it concerns agriculture. Mm-hmm. I recently read an article you wrote a few years ago in which you proved the one thing that was not hereditary was a criminal instinct. That such tendencies were the results of environment. You proved that. Well... And you knew from the beginning that the mother was merely a victim of a false belief. But you used that belief to suit your own purpose. It all adds up against you, Mitchell. We'll just follow through with the girl's advice about your wife's body. I wouldn't be at all surprised by the results of the autopsy. Let's go, Doc. And they did follow through on Doreen's advice. And they did find her estate rifle. And they found traces of poison in the mother's body. So Henry confessed. If it hadn't been for Doreen's psychic powers, he'd have gotten away with everything. Oh, yes, Doreen was definitely psychic. Because she said she went to the room at midnight and no one was there. But she did not go to the room. But she did wake up at the start at midnight. She knew something terrible was happening, but didn't know what it was till this morning. She put things together and knew the truth. And Irving knew about the sickle because he missed it from its rack. And he was merely guessing. But it all worked out to a successful conclusion. And Doreen need have no further worry about her so-called inherited criminal tendency. Because there is no such thing. I know. (laughs) CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time... I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual story. Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.